Again, folks, uh, CCNY uh, Music Fundamentals here. Still looking at chapter two, um, I guess part two of chapter two. We'll start this section with what I think is probably, I don't know, I don't wanna say the most important thing you'll take from this chapter, um, but something that you have to understand very well going forward if you're going to get through all of these other things. And it's, I don't say that to scare anyone. Uh, I don't think it's particularly difficult to understand, but it's a little trickier than just saying adding an accidental does this, raises it a half step. Okay. So we're getting deeper into intervals um, and the two foundational intervals that we're looking at now will ground us in everything we do after this. So what is an interval? As the book says here, just the, di the distance between any two notes is called an interval. Now, every interval has a specific name and a specific quality. We'll get into quality later, but there's two important components to an interval. Uh, quality, again, save that for later, and distance, okay? Distance is what we'll look at here. So the distance between any two notes is called an interval, but what is that distance? That's what we're trying to figure out today. It's what, it's the difference between la la, that interval and la la, right? What's the difference between them? One has a smaller distance, between la la, that's a smaller gap between the first note and the second note. La la, it's a wider distance. So a wider interval versus a smaller interval. Most of the intervals between its pitches, oh, so look at, it asks you to look at the Ed Sheeran tune here. Uh, let's play this. So that's the little Ed Sheeran melody. Uh, most of the intervals in this melody here on page 29 are related by steps. What that means, of course, in steps, it tells you here. And steps, a step between pitches is the next pitch over or above or below, right? So if it skips a pitch, let me, let's look at our, a trusty score to kind of look at the difference here. So uh, clear all this. There's so this is all steps, right? F up to the next closest note is a G, G down to the next closest note, F, F down to E, back up to F. Now, once I start going like this, all right, look at the difference between measure one here, all steps, intervals by step, and this one where it's jumping. This is a step, right? D down to C is a step, but this leap from F up to D and from C down to C, you know that's an octave, uh, but these are larger intervals. And this one, than the steps, okay? So back to our book. There are two kinds. So we're, we've isolated an interval called a step. Now within this step, there are two kinds. That's it, just two. Two kinds of steps. There's the whole step and there's the half step. It's pretty, seems pretty self-explanatory at least insofar as a half step is going to be a smaller interval. Just if you were to take a half a step is a smaller step than a whole step. Right, so that's an easy way to remember the difference. Uh, half step is smaller than a whole step just because half is smaller than a whole. 
And it's fairly simple to understand the distance and interval. And this is one of your key concepts here. A half step or semitone, I'll rarely call it a semitone, is the interval between any pitch and the next closest pitch. This says on the keyboard in either direction or on the staff, right? So let's look at this keyboard. So the easiest thing to remember for a half step is it's the smallest possible distance. The interval of a half step is the smallest possible distance from one pitch in either direction. So let's take F, right? A half step above F, what's the shortest, what's the closest pitch above F? Remember, it's not G because there's something in between. There's a pitch in between this black key. It's this note. Either we can call it F sharp or we can call it G flat. Remember our enharmonic discussion from part one. So again, if we have F and we want to go up a half step, we want to ascend one half step, which key will that be? It'll be this key. See the closest distance. Let's take that, keep with that F and we want to go down one half step. What is the smallest distance? What is the closest note or the closest key on the keyboard below this F? It's this E, okay? That's a half step. Let's take C sharp. We'll call it C sharp. We could also call it what? If we go from here down, we go D down. We could call it D flat. Let's call it C sharp. Uh, we wanna go down one half step from this key, this black key right here. What's the closest key, closest pitch, closest note below this, it's right here, this C. If we wanna go up one half step, it's right here, D. Okay, so that's a half step. Um, and the whole step, as you probably gather, is you can think of it in a couple ways, uh, but this is here, the combination of two half steps forms a whole step. A whole step always has a note that could be inserted in the middle, uh, could be inserted. It's like it's skipping a note or something like that. It's, it's just the distance that takes up two half steps. That's how I like to think of it. So back to our keyboard, let's sit, go back to F where we started. Remember for half step, we did a half step above F was this F sharp or G flat, whatever you wanna call it. Half step below was this E. So let's do a whole step above F. A whole step above F. Well, if a whole step is two half steps, let's go one half step, two half steps. What's this note? G, right? So a whole step above F, we have one half step, two half steps, G. A whole step above F is a G. What's a whole step below F? Let's do two half steps. You can always just count half steps. That goes for any interval, by the way. Every interval is made up, or we can think of as just a certain number of half steps. Um, I'll show you in a second what I mean. So let's do a whole step below F. We know that a half step below F is this right here, this E. And then if we're going two half steps, whoops, sorry. We go one, two, it's this pitch, this black key right here, call it E flat, okay? So again, whole step below F, we're gonna count two half steps, one, two, E flat. So this, is our whole step. Let's hear how they sound. So that's a whole step. By the way, it's a whole step, a whole step F to G 
what's a what if we take g what's a whole step below g it's an f right it's the same interval one's going up the other's going down okay then we have this f again what's a whole step below f we know that two half steps e e flat okay so that's our whole step now what i was saying is we can figure out that any interval we can imagine we can count half steps uh, some students find that useful early on to just remember that a certain number of half steps is a certain interval so if i take this you know f again and i want to go all this distance well i would count the half steps so one two three four five six boom so from here from f down to a oh i, I, I skipped a note y'all i'm sorry that was a huge mistake I, I was gonna say that didn't sound right uh so that's a good way to double check always count your intervals so we want to go this distance one two three four five six seven eight matt big mistake uh eight half steps between f and a okay and so that interval is called something you'll we'll get there later it's just a way of pointing out that um if you're trying to think of distance you can always just count half steps so that's the half step and the whole step and then it, your book does a good job, I think, of uh, looking at different ways of conceptualizing these uh, on a keyboard and, and other, other things like that. And then if that works for you, that's fine. It might help you think about them on a, let's look at the staff here. of all this stuff uh a remember if you're going up a half step um you might think of it as a sharp if you want uh, or you can think of it as b flat and then if we're going up another half step it's b so a up a half step is a sharp a up a whole step right a to be as a whole step. So whichever way works for you, ideally both ways should be comfortable enough um, to deal with, okay? So what was I gonna show you now? Uh, oh yeah, when we're talking about intervals, um, just as another point that the Ed Sheeran we saw in the book a second ago is made up of mostly uh let me let's look at it again mostly stepwise motion whole steps and half steps let's look at that again real quick so again here's this tune so there's a half step here and then down it's a half step and then this a to g is a whole step, G to F, whole step, um, then this A to G, whole step. So whole steps and half steps everywhere. Not all music works that way, uh, of course. L take a look here. I just wrote up um, the Missy Elliott tune, All in My Grill. see it here so notice how these intervals are really wide and you hear the difference between the ed sheeran we just heard and right and you'll get the hang of hearing the difference between a lot of intervals um for whole steps some people have remember certain tunes that use them like my favorite or easiest to remember sound of a whole step is just a cadence, like the national anthem. And the home of the brave 
the brave, right? That sound is a whole step and a half step. Uh, I have a weird one. I always think of the tune Stella by Starlight, which starts as a half step. But if you take a ton, the, a scale and the last note of a scale back to the octave is a half step. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, seven, da, 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 da. that sound. Jaws is another one that uses half steps. Really whatever works for you. And you'll find some, try a few on and see how they fit um, and then go from there. And that's really it. And no, look in the book about double sharps, double flats. You won't see a ton of those, but you need to know what they are. Um, you know, double sharps have this kind of, it looks like an X next to it. Um, and then double flats have two uh, little Bs next to it. And they do exactly what you think. Whereas a sharp raises something by a half step, a double sharp raises a pitch by two half steps. A flat lowers something by a half step, a double flat lowers it by two half steps. Not too complicated there. And that's it. So that's all of chapter two, uh, kind of crash course explaining some things. Do let me know if you have any questions and I will see you all soon. Take care.